Hi everybody, my name is Tristan from the CPAPstore.ca. Today we're going to be talking about urinating at night or nocturia. This is a very common issue amongst those with sleep apnea, but it's often misdiagnosed. So this video is all going to be about peeing at night. Now before I begin, I should say that you should go see a doctor. There could be a variety of issues wrong with your body, such as a UTI, um, prostate issues, kidney stones. One of the most common prostate issues amongst men, let's say 40, 50 plus, is benign prostate hyperplasia, which is basically when your body cannot excrete the full amount of urine out of the bladder, and therefore your bladder is half full when you after you pee, and then you know obviously fills up rather quickly. Okay, um, but I want to talk about a couple things that you. Uh, might be going through um, without realizing it and how to solve nocturia for a, a good majority of people, okay? So the first thing I wanna talk about is insulin resistance. So what happens when you are insulin resistant, um, this is kind of like below diabetes. So you're not diabetic yet, it's a precursor of perhaps type two diabetes. What this means is that your cell receptors stop responding to the insulin in your blood. Okay, when you eat foods, for example, a sugary food or any food, your body processes that sugar, right? Insulin is created in the pancreas, and then your cell receptors take in the insulin and are able to take those sugars into your muscles, into your tissues, into your cells, and use it as energy. Now, the reason why you might become insulin resistant is because if you are eating processed foods, or sugary foods, or just the standard kind of modern processed American diet, your body is so overwhelmed all the time throughout years and years of eating high sugary foods that they basically, your cell receptors basically don't really care about insulin anymore because it's so used to insulin spiking and it doesn't want to overreact. What happens in this case is the only way that the blood sugar can enter your tissues is if your pancreas overwhelms your body with insulin. So what happens is even though you're insulin resistant, your body creates more and more insulin to hopefully get to a critical point where your body has no choice but to take up these sugars, okay? Even your liver, for example, it uses insulin to know when to stop making glucose. What happens when you're insulin resistant and your tissues are not taking up insulin, your liver doesn't know when to stop either. So your liver is actually creating more glucose as well. So you kind of have a perfect storm of high blood pressure. You're insulin resistant. You have too much insulin in your blood. You have too much sugar in your blood and your liver is creating too much sugar as well. So now you have very high blood sugar. What happens when you have high blood sugar is your kidneys can only process so much of it. So your kidneys are obviously filtering out sugars and, and different nutrients and spilling the remainder or spilling the excess right into your urine, right? And so you have, if you have high blood sugar, a lot of sugar is going into your urine. This actually draws water away from your body even more. And then we got, you know, a full bladder or you need to pee. So this is very, a very complicated way of saying when you eat something sugary or sweet, or salty or just high in carbohydrates, like even, even like bread, for example, most people wouldn't think bread is sugary, right? But it's carbohydrates, so it's turned into sugar. When you eat foods like this and you're insulin resistant, which is more common than people think, your body is going to go through all these processes. You're gonna have high blood sugar and then you're gonna have to pee a lot. If you're snacking before bed and you notice that you pee a lot at night, this is most likely the cause, okay? It's not about drinking water. A lot of people think that they're gonna stop drinking water before they go to bed because they don't wanna pee, right? It's actually eating. Now, of course, I wouldn't chug a gallon of water before you go to bed if you're having this issue. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that it's probably more so your eating habits than your actual drinking habits. And drinking a little bit of water before bed should be totally fine. And if it's not totally fine, there's a different issue there. And with that, we're gonna to go to high blood pressure now. So high blood pressure can create you to go pee. Why is that? Well, when you have high blood pressure, your heart feels like it's stressed, okay? Because there's too much volume of blood in your body. Now, it might not actually be too much volume of blood. It could just be the fact that you, for example, are having sleep apneas. When you have sleep apneas or apneas at night where you stop breathing, your body goes into stress because you stop breathing, the oxygen's not coming in, 
your heart ramps up like crazy and then it usually realizes that you're not breathing so you have a gasp and then you kind of start breathing again and it all trickles down but it's one big cycle all night long every apnea body's getting stressed out heart rate's going like crazy and then it comes back down circle 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 when that's happening to your body your heart thinks that it's stressed out and it's gonna increase blood pressure just as a precautionary measure. When that happens, your body produces a hormone called ANP. ANP stands for atrial natriuretic peptide. And what it basically is, is your body's pressure release valve, okay? So this hormone is getting sent into your body because your body thinks that you have too much blood volume, that your blood pressure is too high and you need to get rid of some liquid. Okay, so what, again, complicated process, I'm not gonna go over it, but the end result is you peeing a lot. It's basically your body's defense mechanism to hypertension or high blood pressure. Now this brings us to our third reason why you might pee a lot, is if you do have sleep apnea and you are waking up and you're tossing and turning and you're never getting proper deep sleep, your body is naturally gonna be, well, awake. And what happens when you're awake? You're lying there frustrated. And what happens when you're lying there frustrated, you think to yourself, why can't I sleep? And that's usually followed by the question of, maybe I need to go pee. And what happens is because your body is creating the ANP, like we talked about because of your apneas, and you're tossing and turning, even though you might not need to pee, even though there's, there's a small amount of pee being created that you would normally sleep through, because you're awake, because you're tossing and turning, because your body has high stress and you're have A and P in your system, you feel like the need that you should just get up, go pee, get it over with, and then go back to bed. Of course, this doesn't really work because two hours later you wake up because of another apnea and guess what? You have to go pee again, right? Or at least you think that you might have to go pee again, right? So now let's quickly talk about the cures for all of this. Firstly, like I said, you might have to go to a doctor, you might have a UTI, you might have a prostate issue. Those things do happen, but you'd be surprised how many people get misdiagnosed for prostate issues. If you think it's a food related issue though, or a high blood sugar issue, definitely try your best to quit snacking or quit snacking after dinner. After dinner, that's done. Let your body process all of that sugar, all of those calories that you ate, right? And don't put anything else in your body so your body can you know, go into a proper sleep, okay? Now what you might wanna do is do something more like the keto diet. You don't have to go full keto. Keto's typically saying that you're getting most of your calories from fats instead of carbs. Something that, I mean, I think it is actually fairly healthy, especially in the modern society where we're just eating way too many grains and way too many carbs. Um, okay, that could be another video in and of itself, but reduce your grains, reduce your carbs, reduce your sugars, okay? So you don't have these crazy insulin spikes um, because most people probably will be able to deal with these insulin spikes, but if you're insulin resistant, you won't be able to. And like I said, once you get uh, more high blood pressure in your body, your liver is gonna be creating more gl glucose as well. So it's like this feedback loop. You don't wanna start that. Even if it's like a bite of a cookie before bed, like you just do not wanna start that process right before bed. It's gonna keep you awake. It's gonna make you pee, okay? The second thing, if it is an apnea issue, um, this is another thing, so maybe ask your partner, do I snore, blah, 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 blah. If you do snore, if you do roll around, if they do hear heavy breathing and you aren't snacky, and you have to pee, that is a very, very good indicator of sleep apnea. So snoring and having to pee, that's like, you probably have sleep apnea. In that case, you should go get a sleep test, see if you have sleep apnea, um, and use a CPAP machine for therapy, or there's some other you know options as well, like a interglossal nerve stimulator, which is like a surgery procedure, or a mouth guard from a dentist that pushes your jaw forward, et cetera, et cetera. But the most common would be CPAP machines, which is what we sell at the CPAP store. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Subscribe if you want and uh, take care.